Welcome, family and friends. It's great to have you here. Make sure you're comfortable, maybe with your preferred beverage, and let's explore today's story. I'm worn out. Two long weeks on the road getting the new international office in London up and running, combined with the excessive travel, has taken it out of me, but being away from my girls was the worst part, and the 16 hours of travel home were hell, even in first class. I hated being away from my girls and my sexy wife. I always do, but the lifestyle I've created for my family means the job can be demanding. Because of high demand, my energy company had grown and expanded into 12 countries. Five years ago, I bought out Roger, my partner. Those five years have been demanding yet rewarding. But I'm finally ready to sit back and enjoy the success as I've hired a new president to run the operation, while I remain CEO and owner. I plan on giving the girls the good news as soon as I get home. I'm excited because I'll have more time with my family and friends, and will be able to get back to living a normal life. Don't get me wrong, I love how my company has grown, but deep down my goal has always been to spend most of my time watching my girls grow up and spending more time with my wife. I feel blessed to finally have the opportunity to pull back and enjoy the fruits of my labor at the age of 45. Over the years, the country club memberships, the new Lamborghini SUV that so wanted, the private school for the girls, the new 10,000 square foot house so talked me into, along with all the extras, were expensive, but worth every penny when I saw their smiling faces and felt their warm hugs. My life may have been stressful, but has always been full of love and warmth. I wouldn't change a thing, and I was now looking forward to the next chapter of my life, with my family. 30 minutes from home, while my driver wove through traffic, I sat in the back of a limo, relaxed and enjoying my second glass of bourbon I poured from the sidebar after we left the airport. As we pulled around the circular driveway, the house seemed quiet, but I knew from experience that in a few minutes the girls would be jumping on their daddy, and their mommy would greet me with a warm kiss, and the promise of a wonderful night with her in my arms. To my dismay, I walked into an empty house. The only sound was that of the driver placing my bags in the foyer. I called out. There was no answer. That was odd, the girls were always home when I returned from a trip. I hoped everything was okay. Then I saw the envelope with my name displayed in her wonderful handwriting. To Jonathan, from your loving wife, so. After the driver left, I took my bags to my room, got out of my suit and into some comfortable sweats, and then headed to the bar for a fresh glass of Eagle Rare 10 year old mole bourbon. Anticipating a loving message from my wife, I settled into my favorite chair and took a long swallow of the expensive elixir, relishing the burn, before opening the envelope. Jonathan, my love. What an amazing journey we've had as husband and wife. I've cherished every minute of the last 16 years, and I look forward to the next 50 together as your loving wife. Darling, you know I love you so much, and you are the world to me. You are my entire life, and I cannot live without you. The love you give me is all I want, and I long to be in your arms each and every day. I've missed you so much over these last two weeks, and I can't wait to see you later tonight. Hearing these words warmed my heart, even more than the bourbon warmed my belly. I'm a lucky man to have her as my wife. Did I tell you lately that your sweet tender love making makes me tingle whenever I think of you? Do you remember me telling you just before you left on this most recent trip that I'm madly in love with you, and want to be with you forever? Whenever I look at our girls, I see how much they respect and love you because you're the best father any child could ask for. They love you as much as I do, and we are all blessed to have you in our lives. Wow, I always tear up when I think about my two girls. I love them more than all my possessions and can't wait to hold and kiss them again. I never told you this, but all of my friends are jealous of our relationship and how affectionate we still are to each other, even after all these 16 years of marriage. They all know how deeply in love we are, and they wish they had that in their own lives. There are several reasons for this letter, darling. One is to thank you for being you, for giving me the most wonderful 16 years of my life, for being an amazing dad to our children, for the wonderful lifestyle you've allowed us to experience, and most of all, for all the love you constantly shower upon me. The other reason is something that I feel I need to share. It's something that has been troubling me for the last six months. It's something I never expected, and unfortunately, it has become an important part of my life. This doesn't sound good. I'm not sure I should read any further and definitely not until I refill my glass to steady myself. It must be the jet lag, Zoe and girls are my life, I can't believe I had bad thoughts. She probably joined a new club or started an expensive new hobby. Let's see what she needs to share. Everything you've just read is true, and I mean every word from the bottom of my heart, which makes what I'm about to tell you the hardest thing I've ever done. As much as I love you and will never stop loving you, I have a confession to make. I pray you will understand and not give up on me or leave me over this. I've had a lover for the last six months. 
I really shouldn't call him a lover, because he's more of a sex partner. I have no feelings or love for this man, but we share a sexual relationship. What the hell? Zoe is cheating on me. After all the love and affection, all the freedom, everything she's ever wanted, she betrays her vows. Our sex life was great, how can this happen? I can feel my heart breaking into a thousand pieces. No, Zoe would never take a lover, would she? I trusted her with my heart and soul, how could she destroy everything we've accomplished together? All these years, destroyed by a tawdry fling. She can't be that stupid. The reason I'm telling you now is out of respect and a deep guilt. I can't live with this guilt any longer, and I need you to know that I've been unfaithful, but only in a sexual sense. You will never understand this, but I feel no love for him, just a sexual chemistry I can't explain. He does things to me I cannot put into words, and as hard as I try, I can't stop. He's become an addiction and I need him in my life. I'm sure you have a lot of questions and I'll be completely honest. I respect you too much to lie or hurt you in any way, but I'm afraid this confession has probably caused you some pain, and for that I can only hope you can understand this something I need. You've done more than cause pain, you ducking witch. Complete honesty. You've already lied to me, how can I trust you again? What have you done so? Please believe that I've done my best to keep it apart from us, and not allow it to affect our lives. And if you think back, I think you'll agree you have seen no difference in our relationship, and I know we've both been happy. Nothing has changed between us since this started, but I realize it can't end soon, so it's only fair that you know all about this. No secrets, baby. I love and respect you far too much to ever do that. Please understand that my need for him is just physical, and I won't allow my time with him to interfere with our lover intimacy. I just needed to let you know that there is another part of me which I've given to another man, but that part of me has nothing to do with my love for you and the importance of our family. Family is the most important part of my life and my number one value. Nothing will change that. I know that reading this will be a shock and painful to hear, but I know the type of man you are and how much you love me. Knowing this gave me the confidence and courage to confess my affair, because I know deep down that you will understand my needs and forgive me. Your patience and understanding are just two of the many things I love about you, sweetheart. If you knew the type of man I am, you would have never done this to me and the girls. You've severely underestimated me, and you have just ended our marriage. You can forget any forgiveness. No, the only thing you'll get from me is revenge. Our girls are at your mom's house for the night, so no need to worry about them, and they can't wait to see their daddy in the morning. Tonight, I'm with my friend, because I wanted to give you some time alone to read my letter and understand how things will be from now on. I'll be home around 10pm, and we can pick up where we left off, as if nothing changed, because nothing has changed, darling. I love you just as much today as I did yesterday, and after we reconnect tonight, I know I'll love you even more, if that's even possible. I'll be all yours once I get home, and you can make sweet love to your loving wife again. Just remember as you read this that you are the love of my life, and I am yours, until death do us part. I'm yours, baby, and I'll give you whatever you want to need. Thank you for being you and the best husband a girl could ask for. Love always and forever. Your committed wife, Zoe. Jonathan. After I finished the letter, I realized the glass of bourbon I was drinking was now part of the adjacent wall. I had no recall of even throwing the glass, let alone throwing it hard enough for some of the glass to actually bury several fragments into the wall. Apparently, my subconscious mind had taken over and kicked me into a heightened level of comprehension. Being able to make fast decisions is what led to my success in business, and I was now acting out of habit. I took out a sheet of paper and wrote a reply letter, sealed the envelope with her name clearly written across the front, and placed it on the table next to the envelope that was addressed to me. I put her letter in my pocket, grabbed some luggage and went up to the girls' room to pack several days of clothes, as we would be taking a little trip. In the car I called my handler and had them ready the corporate jet for a trip to San Francisco, where I would stay for the near future with my girls. By 6.30 that night, I was in my Range Rover on the way to my mom and dad's house to pick up the girls. I had a corporate apartment near my California office where I kept a full set of clothing and everything needed for an extended stay already in place. The apartment would be the perfect place until I talked to my attorneys and planned my immediate future. When I pulled into my parents' home, the girls came running out to greet me with a big smile on their faces and a hundred kisses. They were happy to see me, and I felt myself smile for the first time since I got home. Daddy. Daddy's home. We miss you, Daddy, and we didn't think we would see you until tomorrow. Mommy said you wouldn't be back until tomorrow. She had to see her friend Jamie tonight, and we came here to see Grandma and Grandpa. I hugged and kissed them and felt a tear run down my face from all the love and knowing that their lives were about to change because of their mother's adultery. 
The warm embrace did soothe my soul, and for just that moment all my problems no longer existed. The name Jamie didn't escape my attention, and for the time being, placed it into my memory bank. After the girls settled down, I told them I had a surprise, and that we were going on a trip for a few days, and they were going to ride on the company jet. I promised them a fun and exciting vacation. Convincing the girls was the simple part. Explaining things to mom and dad was quite another story. They clearly sensed my anguish and objected to me taking the girls away, until I let them read the letter. I explained I needed some time to get to a safe place to think and plan things out, without allowing emotions to get in the way. I then explained that I left a letter for Zoe, and I would call her from the jet. Finally, I promised I would be back within two weeks, and that this was just a brief trip, and not to worry about the girls, as they would be well taken care of. On the way to the private terminal, I called my new president and told him I was going to be in the California office, and that he was to run things on his own, and to only contact me for any emergencies. William, you have the reins for the next few weeks. Let's see how you do without me there to advise you. I'm sure you'll be fine, and the staff will be eager to assist you. I need some time for a personal matter, so only contact me if it's an emergency. You'll do a great job, and I know my company is in expert hands. Make me proud, William. Don't worry, Mr. King. I have it covered, and everything will be fine. Call me for a daily update if you like. I know how hard it can be to put your baby in somebody else's hands. Let me know if you need anything while you're out there. When we got on the plane, the girls ran up and down the aisle of the 16C passenger jet and played with the flight attendant who adored the girls. Jessica was one of our full-time attendants and we'd become good friends over the last two years. Spending hours alone on flights can create a friendly relationship with the right people. It was 11 o'clock and the girls were sleeping. The cabin lights were dimmed and the atmosphere was calm and relaxing. That's when I dialed home to speak to Zoe. Jonathan, where are you, honey? So, listen closely and don't interrupt because I might lose the connection at this altitude. By now I know you've read my letter, and you know that I have the girls with me, they will call you in the morning. I will call you in the next few days to discuss things. Call my mom and dad if you need anything in the meantime. Good night. I disconnected before she could respond. The flight went smoothly, and we landed at 1am, I carried the girls into the waiting limo, and then up to my apartment a short time later. I put them into bed, gave them a kiss, and then crashed about 10 minutes later without even unpacking. There would be plenty of time for that tomorrow. Zoe returns home. I can't wait to see my wonderful husband. I long for his touch. These two weeks without him have gone so slowly. I'll be his perfect wife tonight and rock his world. My favorite part of his business trips is always his first night back home. His sexual desire and love for me is amazing. As I entered the house, I noticed that the lights were off. I bet he's tired from his long trip. Honey, I'm home. Maybe he's in bed, I'll check. Not there, and no answer on his phone, and no missed calls or text messages, that's odd. Let me check the patio. Perhaps he's relaxing outside. On the way to the patio, I noticed an envelope on the table, and suddenly I have a bad feeling. It was addressed to me, right next to the one I'd left him earlier. I slowly picked it up and then nervously opened the envelope. I wasn't sure what to expect, but before I got a chance to read his letter, my cell rang. It sounded loud in the silence. One glance at the screen showed me that it was Jonathan, and I quickly answered his call. I barely got out a greeting before Jonathan instructed me to listen and not interrupt. He was using what I called his work voice, commanding and impersonal. I listened and with each word I heard a little more pain leak into his voice. I wanted to interrupt and tell him I loved him, but decided to wait until he finished. I regretted that decision because he hung up on me. I knew that wasn't good. Things definitely weren't going as I expected. For a moment or two it was as if I was frozen in time. I just stood there with the phone in one hand and the letter he referred to in the other. Then, suddenly my heart kicked back into gear and I jolted, dropping the phone. It clattered onto the tile floor, but I ignored it and turned my attention to the letter. My hands shook and I could barely make out Jonathan's words through the tears that were running down my face. Dear so. Thank you for your letter and honesty. Yes, our 16 years together have been the happiest years of my life. You have given me two special girls, who I love with all my heart. The love we shared has been special, and I'm not surprised to hear that our friends are jealous of our love and intimacy, because you have always been the most important thing in my life. I was going to surprise you tonight and tell you how I've made some changes at work that will give me much more time to be with you and the girls, but I was the one that got the big surprise, coming home to an empty home. 
All I thought about on my day of travel was getting hugs and kisses from my girls, and romantic kisses from my amazing, sexy wife. But for the first time in all the years I've traveled, I came home to an empty home. This was a long, exhaustive trip, and I just wanted to come home and relax with you tonight. But sadly, I sit here alone in my big empty house, a broken man. I was disappointed and sad until I saw the envelope addressed to me on the table. I hope the letter was going to reveal some surprise from you and the girls, and that you all would be home shortly, but the letter was nothing I would have expected. Yes, I love you with all my heart, and as you wrote in your letter, I have been madly in love with you, and wanted to spend the rest of my life with you and our daughters, and maybe in the future, our grandchildren. In your letter, I realized that you may have overestimated my understanding and forgiveness. Once I read your confession about your six-month affair, you ended our marriage. In fact, the moment you gave any intimacy to your lover was the end of us as a married couple. We, or should I say I, just didn't realize it until I read your letter. Tears start falling from her eyes as she just realized that she may have ended their marriage. No, please God, no. This can't be happening, Jonathan was supposed to understand. Zoe was now on her knees sobbing into her hands, understanding for the first time that she may have made a big mistake. I'm sorry to have to tell you this but, I will not understand, nor accept, your need for another man. I'm happy that you found someone to complete your sexual needs, and your special connection, but for your infidelity, you've given up your right to be my wife and the mother of my children. The girls are with me, and we are headed to my San Francisco office for the next week. I need time away from you and our home in order to get my head around your confession and your actions. You can call the girls tomorrow afternoon as we won't be landing until 1am, and they will be tired from our trip. I need to be with my girls right now, as they are the only things keeping me sane. They are in safe hands, as you know, so you won't have to worry. Now you'll have lots of free time to be with your lover while I'm working things out. There's no reason for us to talk, so please don't call or text, as I won't be answering your calls. Please call and FaceTime the girls as often as you like. I will not prevent you from seeing them, nor will I let them know that their mother has traded their daddy in for another man. I'll let you do that when the time comes. He has to take my call, he loves me. I have to make him understand that I only want him. I'll tell him it's over, I know he'll forgive me. Why won't he answer the phone? Damn it, Jonathan. Please talk to me. He has to talk to me before he does anything stupid. I know him and I have to talk to him quickly and explain things better. Your affair has hurt me beyond comprehension, and I am perplexed that you would think I would accept this, and allow you to have an affair and betray your wedding vows. You shattered my entire world in that one letter, and it will take a long time for me to get over the love I've lost. I went from being the happiest man in the world with a plan for all of us to be even closer, to a broken, defeated man, in a matter of minutes. The woman I loved has turned me into an unwilling cluckled, humiliated me beyond my wildest nightmares, and expected me to welcome her home. I'm sad, and just want to cry, but you know me, and I won't dwell on the past. I'll let you know when we are coming back. Jonathan. Zo, With tears falling uncontrollably, I sat there completely shocked and devastated. Oh god, no, he can't do this. He can't leave me. This is all wrong, and not the way he was supposed to react. He always told me he loved me and wanted me to be happy. How can he be this upset? I have to explain this better. Obviously, he didn't understand what I wrote, and took everything the wrong way. I need to call Jamie, he'll know what to do. Hello Jamie, it's me. He left me and took the girls. What do I do? He was supposed to talk to me and understand our relationship meant nothing but sex. He said he's leaving me, and I don't know what to do, I said, crying into the phone. Zo, stop crying. He's upset, but he'll get over it in a few days. It's not like you're leaving him or dating me, it's just a few hours of sex that we share when he's at work. He wouldn't want to leave you over that. He will also think about the cost of leaving you, and that will help him realize he needs to accept the new normal. Did you tell him how much you love him? Yes, of course. I explained it all in the letter, and I meant every word. He's the most important thing in my life, and I'll die without him. How can he be so selfish and not understand? I needed him to be happy for me. What can I do here? I'm hurting so much. Just get some sleep and try calling him tomorrow after he has some time to digest what's happened and how things will be from now on. I'll be home by noon tomorrow. Why don't you come over and we can talk about it then? Get some sleep so. There was very little sleep that night, and when I finally gave up trying the next morning a little afternoon, I immediately dialed Jonathan's number, but it rang once and then cut off. That meant he'd blocked my number. Now I had no way to get through to him. I'll call the girls, they'll put their dad on the phone. Cassie answered the phone and was happy to hear from me, which made me feel good. Hi mommy. Hi, sweetheart, is your daddy there? I need to speak with him. 
Mom, Daddy said he doesn't want to speak with you and won't take the phone if you call. What's going on, Mom? Dad seems really upset and different. It's nothing. Moms and dads have arguments sometimes. Your dad misunderstood something I did, got angry, and left. I need to explain it, so he won't be angry anymore. I'll ask him to talk to you again, Mom, hold on. I heard her speaking to him and didn't like his reply. Mom, he said he'll call you when he's ready to talk. Will you be okay, Mom? Yes, don't worry, baby. Your dad and I will be fine. Just behave and call me, okay? Give your dad a kiss for me and put your sister on the phone. Jonathan, Jennifer, 13, and Cassie, 15, looked at me after the call with curiosity. Cassie, being the eldest, had a sorrowful edge to her gaze. Has mom been cheating on you, daddy? My heart broke when I heard her question. Holding back tears, I just shook my head and told them to get dressed for lunch. This was the hardest thing I've ever had to do, but I knew with love and support they would make it through the trouble ahead. Earlier that morning before the girls got up, I called my family attorney, who was on the east coast and already at his desk. I've known George for 20 years, and we've been through a lot together so it was without preamble that I told him the story and what I wanted to happen. George, I need to know what a divorce will look like and how bad it will be. I want custody of the children, no matter the cost. There is no reconciliation, counseling, or forgiveness. I want this over as fast as possible. For a long moment there was silence on the other end of the phone. I understood and gave him a chance to absorb the news. He was probably as surprised at my words as I'd been when I read So's letter. Jonathan, I'm so sorry this has happened. Kate and I always thought you two were the perfect couple, and I can't understand how she could do this, but I understand what you're asking. Do you remember when you started the company with Roger, and he demanded a prenup be in place before he agreed to go into business with you? Do you remember how adamant he was because of what had happened to his last business, and how his wife screwed him? Well, your prenup is in place and up to date, and if she is, in fact, having an affair, she gives up her rights to the children and any financial gain from the marriage. Over the years, while your company grew, I kept a prenuptial current, worked with your corporate attorneys, and put most of your possessions under trust, with you as the benefactor. The house, cars, bank accounts, and investments all fall under this trust that cannot be touched. What that means is if she has broken the prenup, she leaves the marriage with what she came into it with, and forfeits any rights to the children. I know we didn't put this together for this purpose, but it sure looks like it will work out in your favor. George, you're right. I never in a million years would have thought she would cheat on me, and I forgot all about the prenup. But George, all I have is the letter confessing her affair. What else do we need? Well, her confessing on video or tape would help, along with some photos or confession from her lover. George, can you take charge of that while I'm out here in California with the girls? Money is no object and I want proof as fast as possible, I don't want this to drag on. There's a name that my girls brought up, a guy named Jamie. The only Jamie I know is the tennis instructor at our country club. Can you set things up with the pie and suggest he start there? I'm sure she will contact her lover while I'm gone. The pie report? Sure enough, Jamie, the tennis instructor, was my nemesis. They were careless, which made it simple for the pie firm to complete their investigation. With my permission, they put a tracker on Zoe's car, audio recording devices inside the car, and video cameras in our home. All the evidence from these devices were legal due to the fact my company had control via the trust. Over the next week, they had enough audio and video, along with her written confession, to move things forward. I never looked or listened to any of the evidence as I didn't want those images haunting me for the rest of my life. Of course, Jamie turned out to be a player and had to leave his last two jobs because of betting other married women. He was much younger, in great shape, and all the ladies at the club were enamored with him. Zoe was just one of the many wives he was having an affair with at the club. Apparently, middle-aged married women are easy targets for this club pro. George called me five days after our first conversation to update me on the investigation. Jonathan, we have all the evidence we need. What do you want us to do? Are you still of a mind to divorce Zoe? With no hesitation, I answered, have divorce papers drawn up with maximum pain. I want Zoe to feel some of the hurt she has caused me and understand how badly she screwed up. I would like them served on Tuesday at 10 a.m. at our country club. At 10 a.m. every Tuesday she has a tennis lesson with Jamie. Can we come up with something to serve him with as well? I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's nothing more than a nuisance suit. Think of something because I want him named in the lawsuit. We could arrange that, and I'll work on the tennis pro angle and get back to you. We might be able to include the club for hiring a known predator. It probably won't go anywhere, but everyone will know about the affair, which I suppose is what you want. When are you coming back? 
I plan to be home waiting for her after she's served on Tuesday. I'll arrange to be at the house before she returns home. Are you certain you're going to divorce her Jonathan? As we speak now, definitely. However, I have to consider the girls and have a conversation with her before I sign the papers. This is hard, George, and I hope you never have to go through anything like this. I love that woman with all my heart, and I just can't stop the love. I also hate what she's done to me and the girls, and I can never forgive that. Whatever you decide, I'm here to help Jonathan. Stay in touch and we will let you know the moment she is served. We arrived at the house Tuesday morning, before 9am, and the girls were happy to be back home. I told them that after their mom returned from her tennis lesson, I wanted them to stay in their rooms while their mom and I work things out. I could tell they were upset and worried, and I tried my best to make them understand everything would work out. Tuesday so. It was a warm summer day, and the tennis dress I wore was short and sexy. It showed off my toned legs, and Jamie smiled when he saw his sexy concubine step into his den. After we exchanged a warm hug and were about to start the lesson, a girl in short cut-off jeans and cropped shirt came bouncing onto the court. Hi, can we help you? Jamie asked, smiling at the cute girl. Yes, are you Jamie Connors? I am. Who are you? Well, today, I'm your worst nightmare. You've been served, she said, handing him an envelope. He opened it as I came over to see what it was. He looked at it and said, Sheet, I'm named in a lawsuit against the club for sexual misconduct. What the duck? Who did this? The young girl was still standing next to Jamie when she asked me, Excuse me miss, are you Zoking? Yes, I answered, surprised. This is for you. You've been served. When I saw the divorce decree, I fell to my knees and cried. This can't be happening. He's divorcing me. He didn't even give me a chance to explain. How can he do this to me after all these years? My god, he knows how much I love him, so why would he do this? As I knelt sobbing on the hard clay court, I felt the curious looks from the other members. This is horrible. I can only imagine what they're thinking. How could all this have gone so wrong? I could tell Jamie was angry as he paced back and forth on the court, glaring at the legal documents, when he looked at me and said, Zo, you need to go home, and I need to go to the club to see if they were served as well. I need to straighten this out, and you need to go home and contact your husband. See if you can stop him from ruining our lives. Please go. Brushing the tears from my cheeks, I rose and ran to my car, and tried to gain control of my emotions, but, once I was inside and away from prying eyes, the tears returned and I sobbed uncontrollably. I drove back to the house, scared and upset. When I got there, the girls ran out to greet me, which made me forget my problems for the moment. Where's your dad? He's inside. I ran into the house, and the second I saw him, I tried to run into his arms. All I wanted to do was hug him and tell him how much I loved him, but he wanted nothing to do with me. He put his arm out preventing me from getting close. His rejection gutted me, and for the second time in the last hour, I fell to my knees as the tears returned. Honey, please don't do this. You know how much I love you and I need you. I miss you so much. Please don't push me away. Zo, I see you have the divorce papers. We're no longer a couple and will soon be divorced. You should have realized it was over the moment you shared yourself with Jamie. Zo, I don't share. This is all on you, so please be an adult and take responsibility for your actions. If you read the divorce agreement, you already know that you will need to move out and find a place to stay. The girls will stay with me, and you will have unlimited visitation rights, unless you piss me off. The moment I read your letter and found out how treacherous you've been, I took drastic action. Since you violated the prenup you signed before we were married, you have given up the rights to the children and any financial assistance. Jonathan, you've done all of this without even giving me a chance to explain, and that's not fair. Obviously, I didn't explain it correctly in the letter, and I'm so sorry about that, but give me a chance, please. Okay. Go ahead, please explain it so I can understand what you did. Honey, in the letter, I wanted you to know how much I love you and would never leave you. You and the girls mean more to me than anything else in the world, and I'd never do anything to hurt any of you. I wanted you to know I would die for you and want to be with you for the rest of my life. Your love for me is amazing, and I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. So, you can't just kick me out and divorce me, you need to understand that this was just something physical that I needed. You've always given me whatever I wanted or needed, why does this have to be any different? Well, I do understand that you believe you love me, and want us to stay together. You say you'd never do anything to hurt me, and yet you brought another man into our marriage. How could that do anything but hurt me? There is no room for a third person in my married life. 
I have zero tolerance for infidelity, and that's what you have done. You become an unfaithful wife, committed adultery on me in our marriage, broken our wedding vows, our marital contract, and humiliated me and your children. And for that, I will never forgive you. You chose to have sex with a man outside our marriage, and for that you will face the consequences. There are always consequences for our choices, and I believe you chose poorly this time. Why aren't you listening to me? I don't love him. You're the man I love. Can't you understand that? Why are you being like this? She yelled at him in frustration. His expression didn't change and so I repeated myself, it's you I love, not him. What the hell is wrong with you so? You made me an unwilling cuckold and humiliated me. That's not love, that's contempt. You have given up your marriage and children for a man who is a known womanizer, and who is currently sleeping with Barbara Weiss, Chloe Thomas, and two other women at the club. You stupid slot, did you really think you were his only girl? Furthermore, have you considered your future after he's done with you in a few months? Everyone will know you're a cheating slot, and the only men that will want you are looking for sex. And at your age, you're no longer marriage material. I see a long lonely future for you so. You really didn't think this through. Someday you may understand what you've done and the life you have chosen. Now, you need to leave. I'll have my driver take you where you want to go, but you are no longer welcome in my home. You want me to just leave? This is my house too. I want to stay here, honey. I'll stop seeing him, it was a mistake. We can just forget this and get things back to normal if you'll just give me a chance, but don't kick me out. Well, it's not your home. The house is in a trust, and you are not part of the trust. The car is also part of the trust, and that stays here as well. You have $3,000 in your checking account, which is what you had when we married, nothing more. And no, we can't go back to where we were unless you can figure out a way to unduck yourself. I will never touch you again after you defiled yourself with that asshole. Part of the divorce agreement demands you to take your maiden name back and not use mine any longer. You will have unlimited access to the girls, but they will live here with me. You gave everything up the moment you started ducking your boy toy. How's that working out for you now so? Was that special chemistry and sexual satisfaction worth losing everything over? I hope knowing what you've lost keeps you up every night and that you experience the pain you've caused me and it stays with you for many years. Yes, I love you more than life itself, but I will not live with a cheating wife. You can spin your story any way you like, but the bottom line is that you took a lover outside of our marriage, and that was the end of our 16 wonderful years. Zoe, still on the floor, was despondent. Her world was crashing to pieces around her, and until that moment she had always gotten everything she wanted, and never expected Jonathan to react the way he had. She actually thought he would understand and give her this brief liaison if it made her happy. Zoe realized that she had completely misread her husband, took terrible advice from that predator, Jamie, lost her family, and destroyed her wonderful marriage of 16 years. Jonathan looked at Zoe, holding back tears for the loss of his happy life and the love he carried in his heart. His love was replaced with loss and sorrow because of her selfishness and actions. He knew the pain and sadness that overwhelmed him would last a long time, but he also knew there was no way back from her infidelity and contempt. The Aftermath Six months later, the divorce was final. Since Zoe was still the mother of my two girls, I paid for the first three months on a small two-bedroom furnished apartment that was near our home and the club. I also purchased a three-year-old Toyota Camry for her to drive. I knew I didn't have to give her anything, but I needed my kids to be able to see their mom whenever they wanted. Yes, the Lamborghini and the rich lifestyle were now all gone. She gave everything up for some loser tennis pro that she'll never see again. Being the nice guy I am, I even got her a job at the country club. Yes, the country club was happy to help once I dropped my lawsuit. They agreed to get rid of Jamie and help So with employment if I would stop the lawsuit. So is no longer a member of the country club, but is now one of the servers of the club, which helps her pay her bills. Since she had no experience or training for any other job, her only option was taking the waitress job at the club. I'm sure she felt humiliated when she went from being one of the well-known members of the club to being one of their servers. There were no more expensive shopping trips or weekends away with the girls. Whatever money she earned from the club had to go to her rent, insurance, and food. For her entire life she never had to worry about bills or budgets, but suddenly she was now on her own. The realization of what she had done and given up hit her like a ton of bricks. I didn't need her to admit it, I saw it on her face every time I saw her. Of course, Jamie ditched so once the lawsuit started in an attempt to save his job, so now she had nobody to come home to. The girls told me their mom cried every night for the love and lifestyle she gave up to satisfy some selfish needs. It took all of this for her to understand what she had done, and how stupid she was to think her husband would accept her selfish desires. 
I was sad how things turned out and told the girls that I still loved their mom and that they should love and forgive her. They remained close and saw their mom on her days off. Later that year, while she was picking up the girls, we had our first friendly conversation. She told me she finally realized what she had done and begged me to forgive her for her actions. Jonathan, I know we are not getting back together and you'll never be able to trust me again, but I wanted to apologize and beg you to forgive me. I realize now what I did and how much I hurt you. My life was so different and I was a spoiled woman without a care in the world. I felt entitled and justified in my actions back then and never even thought about how you would react. Now I know what I've done and what I've put you through and I am so sorry. If there was a way to take it all back, I would do it in a second. Losing you is the worst thing that's ever happened to me and I miss you and your love so much it hurts. I've grown up over this last year and when I look back, I can't believe I was that stupid and threw everything away because of my selfish righteous attitude. I'm so sorry for screwing things up, and I beg you find it in your heart to forgive me. I'll always love you, Jonathan, and I want you to know that you were the perfect husband. The confession was heartfelt, and I knew that, in time, I might be able to forgive her. I would never stop loving her. She was my life, and I'd loved her for so many years, that kind of love you can't just turn off. Zoe was still a beautiful woman and I felt certain it wouldn't be long before someone took her home, and she started a new life. I hoped she'd learned her lesson and would remain faithful when that happened. They fired Jamie from the club, and he ended up moving to South Carolina, where a small club on Helton had gave him an assistant tennis pro gig. It only took him a month before he got right back to his old tricks and started going after the married women. However, the boys in South Carolina are a little less forgiving than they are in the big city. When he got caught with the wife of one of the good LA boys, things didn't end well. A month later the local newspaper reported an alligator attack on the golf course over the weekend, and, the photos showed an arm in one of the 17-foot gator's mouths. Poor Jamie must have gone for a run near the lake, and accidentally got snagged by one of them gators. Finally, Jamie was no longer the predator and had become the prey. During one of my lonely nights reflecting our happy times together as a family, I read a passage that gave pause. A man's biggest mistake is giving another man an opportunity to make his woman smile. I will never make that mistake again. This is the end of our story, but not the end of the video. So, let's start second story. I know, I know, I'm waiting for your happy comments. Jason, finally long videos. Yes yes, that's all for you. So, second one. I never stopped loving her even after I had my suspicions. Several odd things were happening that had not occurred in our 15 years of marriage, and my spidey senses were activated. Her outfits and her new look had changed significantly when the new boss took over the office. Our sex life had suddenly changed for the better. She was now actually instigating sex, which she had never done before. More frequent text messages at night and late meetings after work were now common. Of course, she had perfect excuses for everything but for some reason, my jealous nature wasn't happy. I told the pie firm not to tell me anything until the file was complete. I didn't want things to change between us and prayed I was just a paranoid husband. After three months of investigation, I was given a folder with the news I hoped would never come. After reviewing the video, audio, and photos I told Mac, my attorney, to execute the divorce papers and have them ready for me by Wednesday afternoon. I planned to show up on their Thursday night date while they thought I was out of town. I planned a nice surprise for the couple. It still amazed me how she thought she could have gotten away with this. Annie knows me better than anyone, she knows how intuitive, strong-willed, and unforgiving I am. Hell, she's seen how ruthless I can be when I took over the company and destroyed my competitors unmercifully. I now own a controlling interest in a large trucking company. I'm well respected by truckers and teamsters and treat them well. I know they have my back if I ever needed them. I've given Annie everything and always treated her like a queen, and she knows it. She tells her friends and family how wonderful I am, and how it's embarrassing how I dote over her, but she also tells them how much she loves it. This is why the question still pounds my head, even during these last few hours. Why? Why would she jeopardize everything she has for a fling? An affair with her boss for some sex. Why? This was my most troubling question. Annie had always been a great mother and wife, which really made this hard to understand. Sex was frequent and satisfying, not satisfying enough, I guess. She took care of the house and worked full-time as an executive assistant for a local technology company. To this day I would never have thought she would have taken a lover. My name is Luciano Orsetti, and I'm Annie's husband of 15 years. We have two preteen daughters who still love their daddy. I'm what you would call an alpha male that takes no sheet from anyone, but treats his wife like the special prize I knew she was. In our relationship I allow her to take charge and feel empowered, to a point. 
Thanks to genetics I inherited my dad's physical attributes. I'm 6 foot 6 inches tall, 265 pounds of muscle, with an imposing figure, but a gentle giant, until I'm triggered. Annie saw that a few times when we were out together and was hit on by some tough guys. Annie is a sex doll, with big bobs, long sexy legs, a small waist, and an angelic face. Guys are always checking her out and flirting with her, which drives me crazy. One of my flaws is my mean jealous streak, which once activated, is hard to control. Over the years I've learned to keep my rage at bay, but I have not yet mastered this talent. Anyway, Annie has seen my jealous rage twice over the last 15 years, and she knows what I'm capable of. Twice when we were out, some jerks tried to get her to dance after she already told them she was with me. Both times they didn't take no for an answer, and pulled her out of the booth as I sat there watching. They must have thought since they were big tough guys, I would just sit there and let them take my wife. Big mistake. The first time it happened was when we were out discussing our girls and having a fun time together. I was stunned when this guy had the balls to grab her hand and pull her out of the booth. Before he took his first step to the dance floor I was out of my booth and between him and my wife. With a quick move, I dislocated his shoulder and pushed him into our booth, where he squirmed in pain as Annie, and I left the facilities. The other time, it was similar, but that guy suffered a broken wrist and a concussion, as we again left the bar. As I said, I don't take sheet from anyone, and my biggest problem is jealousy, which again begs the question for this affair since she knows me, why would she do this? Date night Thursday. I had everything arranged. One of my fixers would accompany me and present the folder when I was ready. I was there early and gave the hostess a nice tip to seat them in a more private location. My brilliant wife knew I was out of town. And on the audio recording, I heard her tell her boss that she was free Thursday night if he still wanted to get together. Of course, the city did, and excitedly said he would make all the plans. The Pi agency had set me up with software to add to Annie's phone to get copies of her text messages and emails. The application also had a feature to record any audio and upload it to a private server. On that Monday, I got a copy of the text he sent to Annie, which included the time he would pick her up, the restaurant where they had reservations, and to dress sexy for him. I spit with anger after reading this, and how my future ex-wife was acting and the balls on this guy to pick my wife up at my home. My plan was actually a simple one. Let the lovers settle in with their first drink, then appear suddenly. At that point, I would start my performance, which would end with a small threat and the surprise divorce papers. My anger and need for revenge were rising. Deep down I knew Annie would not want a divorce because she really did love me and the children. I knew what I was about to do would crush her and change her life forever. I didn't care, and I just wanted her to feel some of the pain she gave to me. Now some would say I should be forgiving, and let it go for the sake of the children, and our 15 years of marriage, after all, it was only sex. Did I mention that I was an immature jealous alpha male? No ducking way was I going to allow some other man inside my wife, and then keep her as my loving partner. As much as I loved her and how much it hurt, I knew I could never look or touch her the same way again. I had eyes and backup on the scene, ready to alert me at the right time. So, Thursday night after getting the word that the loving couple was seated and served their drinks, I was ready to meet them face to face. I left my car and walked into the restaurant and smiled at the hostess, took a deep breath, and with my rage locked away I proceeded with my plan. The loving couple was seated at their table, and my heart hurt when I noticed my beautiful wife wearing a sexy cocktail dress, with her perfect breads on full display. This really pissed me off, as she never dressed like that for me. Why? Why would she do this to me? I couldn't understand this, it made no sense, and it was driving me crazy. Apparently, she wanted to be his eye candy tonight, and look sexy for her boyfriend, and this put my rage on edge. I approached them from a side angle and made my way to the table without their knowledge, because they were so romantically focused on each other. How sweet. It was only after I pulled a chair from the adjoining table that they noticed my movement. The look on Annie's face was priceless. She had a combined look of shock, fear, and guilt, which I've never seen before. Her date had no idea what was going on, and didn't realize that I was her husband. He just looked at me with an annoyed expression on his stupid face. And so, it started. Hi Annie, are you two having a fun date night? I asked with a big smile. Sweetheart, what are you doing here? I thought you were out of town tonight. My boss, Jeremy, invited me to dinner to discuss some changes in the organization. Please join us. Jeremy, this is my husband Luciano, she said in a loving and calm voice. Man, she was smooth. I had to admit, she was cool and fast on her recovery. The drink I had ordered before I walked to the table arrived, and after ignoring Annie's lies, I proposed a toast. I ignored a question and with a disarming smile, I said, pick up your glasses and join me in a little toast. 
Here's to an interesting night and a new direction. After my toast, I smiled and turned to her boss. Jeremy, do you know why Annie and I have been able to stay happily married for 15 years? Honesty and trust, it's as simple as that. Are you married, Jeremy? Of course, I already knew everything about him from the report. Yes. I've been married for 20 years, and I have four wonderful children from 5 to 13 years old, and I agree with you, Luciano. Trust and honesty are an important part of our marriage as well. I'm so happy to hear that, Jeremy. Annie, do you also feel the same way? I asked knowing that I was putting her in a difficult position. Yes, darling, it's been important to our marriage, she asserted confidently. After all, she just said they were just having a business dinner. She had no reason to act guilty or nervous. You see, Jeremy, we have an amazing marriage, and Annie knows how much I love her and would do anything for her, as long as she remains faithful. I saw them both squirm a little as I took another drink from my glass. I continued my game. So how long have you two been dating? I asked casually with a big grin. Annie was annoyed, tried to take control, and became indignant. Honey, this is a business meeting, and you're embarrassing me with my boss. Please stop acting jealous, you know me better than that. Taking Annie's lead, her date took the opportunity to put me in my place as well. Yes Luciano, this is just a business dinner. I needed to discuss some changes I'm about to make and needed to meet with Annie tonight. I'm sorry if you got the wrong idea, my friend. I would never overstep my professional relationship, especially with a married woman. I tried to look apologetic and said, Oh I'm sorry, so you've never been out with my wife on a date, and this is just a business dinner. That's right Luciano, nothing going on between us, my friend. Annie, is that right? Just a business meeting and you've never been with him or on a date before. I asked a question that would determine our future. Honesty or lies? Which was it going to be? Unfortunately, I already anticipated the answer before she spoke. Only business meetings darling, I would never be with another man, especially my own boss. Now please stop acting childish. I'm sorry Jeremy, my husband has a little jealous streak, but he knows how much I love him. I lowered my head acting submissive and said, Please forgive me, I'm sorry I do get a little jealous. I mean, seeing you in this sexy dress out with this good looking man, well you can understand I hope. Jeremy patted me on the back, obviously relieved that I was fooled, and said, Luciano, no need to apologize. If my wife looked this good and was out with a strange man, well I'm not sure what I would do. Everyone relaxed and I raised my hand to the man watching us from the bar. He got my signal and approached the table. Everyone looked up at him as he handed me a thick folder, turned, and walked away. I saw Annie and Jeremy giving each other a questioning look as I opened the folder and started laying down photos on the table. Just before I placed the first photo on the table, I turned to Annie and spoke in a quite sad voice. Annie, you know I love you with all my heart and would have given you the world. You have taken my love and all our years of marriage and threw it all away. You have hurt me deeply and I'll never get over those videos and the things you said about me on the recordings. I'll never be able to get them out of my mind for the rest of my life. Thank you for that. The first photo I put down was of Annie on her knees with Jeremy's clock in her mouth. The next one was a photo of him shooting his cum on her face, and then several of them ducking in different positions. Annie gasped and put her hands up to her mouth. Jeremy was pissed and wanted to know where I got the photos, and I just told him to shut the duck up. After I laid out the photos, I took time to look at them and make comments on each one. I said things like, Annie, you look so sexy with this clock in your mouth and you look very happy in this photo Jeremy, it looks like you're coming in my wife's kitty. Did you enjoy her? Annie was now openly sobbing and begging me to stop. Other tables were looking our way as I tried to keep the volume down, so as not to disturb the entire restaurant. Annie realized how bad this looked and only had one way out, I'm sorry baby. Can we just leave, and I'll explain what happened. It's really not what it looks like. I looked at her with an amused expression and asked very slowly, it's not what it looks like. Are you going to continue to lie to me, her? Before you do, both of you should know that I have hours of video, audio, text messages, emails, and photos. Annie, I must say, that after seeing those videos, I never realized that you could be that slutty, you never shared that side of yourself with me, and that hurts. I've spent a fortune over the last three months to get this info, and it's all legal. So, believe me, I understand everything. Removing the documents I said, now let me explain why I'm here, and what's going to happen tonight. I then handed Annie the divorce papers and said, Annie, you and I are done. You and your boyfriend destroyed our marriage and my love for you. You have hurt me to a level I've never experienced, and I will never be with you again. Now, you're going to sign this tonight, and my associate at the bar is a notary, and will attest to your signature. 
If you don't sign tonight, I will expose all of the triple X videos and audio to your parents, all of our friends, and your children will find out what kind of mother you are. I've treated you fairly in this divorce, but the girls will live with me. There's no way my daughters will live with a cheating slot who are like you. Jeremy, my friend, I suggest you convince your girlfriend here to sign this before I leave. Otherwise, I am going to deliver a copy of all the evidence to your wife and your executive team at work. When I'm done, you will not have a job, and I'll be sure to convince your wife Sarah to kick your bum out and ruin you financially for a very long time. Now, I don't want to do any of that, so just convince her to sign the divorce papers, and then my future ex-wife is all yours. I want nothing to do with this sewer ever again. The words slashed her heartstrings. The thought of losing her daughters was something else she could not live with. Tears were flowing from her face, and her boyfriend looked panicked. Annie begged me to stop and reconsider. She gave me the usual bullshit lines, it's not what it looks like, let me explain, I'll make it up to you, it was just a mistake, please forgive me, blah, blah, blah. She ended with, Luciano, I love you and I don't want this. Please give me another chance. Ignoring her please, I stood up and said, I'm going to the men's room, and when I come back I want the papers signed. If they are not signed, I promise that both of you will not be able to comprehend the amount of hell I will bring into your lives. I left Annie crying and her lover in a state of shock. I knew Jeremy would do whatever he could to get her to sign those papers to save his own bum. While I was gone Jeremy spoke up quickly. He knew that there was no way he could have his wife and his work see those videos, and would do whatever he could to prevent that. He had to convince Annie to sign the papers, Annie, just sign them, and then ask him to hold them for a week to give you a chance to talk. You need to convince him that you love him. Tell him you'll go to therapy, whatever it takes, but make him wait a week. Tell him it's the least he can do for 15 years of marriage for just one mistake. It's the only chance I see for you right now. I can tell he isn't fooling around, and if he has the videos and audios, we're both screwed. I don't want a divorce, she cried. Trust me, if you get him to wait I'm sure you can save your marriage. Think about the children. You don't want to lose the girls, do you? The tears started up again and after a few minutes, I returned to the table. Well, have you signed them yet? With the saddest face I'd ever seen, she looked into my eyes and said, Honey, I'll do whatever you want, including signing these papers but, will you please give me a week before you do anything? Please let me come home with you and give me at least that much. After 15 years, please give me one week to be with my girls and talk. Please give me that much. I sat silent and looked into her eyes for a long moment and considered a request. I gave in and said, even though you deserve sheep from me for what you've done and how you threw away our marriage for this asshole, I'll give you that. You can come home, and you can have a week before I turn the paperwork into my attorney. You will stay in one of the guest bedrooms, I don't want you near my bed during this time. Now sign them so I can get out of here. She signed the papers and I put them into the folder, then stood up to leave. Before I left I took her hand into mine, and she smiled until she realized I was removing her wedding rings. I put them in my pocket and then removed the ring I had worn for 15 years. I held it up as she looked at it, and carelessly flipped it into her glass of wine. The look on her face gave me only a small amount of satisfaction, but when she started crying again, it made me smile just a little because I knew she was starting to feel my pain. I turned to Jeremy and said, Well Ascol, she's your date, do what you want with her. I'm leaving, but remember this Jeremy, you ducked my wife, ruined our marriage, and jeopardized so many things including my children's love for their mother. Your bum is mine, and I have your balls in my hand. Don't duck with me, you're lucky I didn't follow through on my original plans for you. It's not over between us, bum wipe. You will be hearing from me soon. Got it. Jeremy nodded quietly as I towered over him. It looks like I may have ruined their plans for the evening. I wonder if they still want to duck after I leave. As I started to leave Annie grabbed my arm and said, Luciano, can I please come home with you? I just want to be with you. Please. I pulled my arms away as if touched by a hot iron and said, Duck you. I don't want to be seen with a whore. You're his slot tonight. I'll see you after he's done ducking you, tonight or tomorrow. Makes no difference to me anyway, you have one week. You discuss me, I'm embarrassed to have been your husband. Okay. Yes, I was a bit rude. But I really didn't care. I felt as if I kept my jealousy and anger in check. I was proud that I was able to suppress all the built-up rage. I did give her a week. Let's see now what happens. The next morning, I heard her come home about an hour later that evening, and to her credit, she went directly to the guest suite. She realized there was no way I was going to speak calmly to her that night. We met the next morning in the kitchen when I came down for coffee. I was still in a revenge mood, and I continued my ass-cold persona and said, Good morning, whore. 
How's my slut wife today? She cringed and looked down into her coffee and said exactly the words every cheating wife that gets caught and wants to save their marriage says honey we have to talk. Listen, there is nothing to talk about Annie. I know what you have done. I know how long you have been doing it. I know all the things you said to him about me in our marriage. I saw you do things with him that you never did with me. I saw how you dress for him. I know he's bigger and better, I heard that a hundred times in your videos. You lied, concealed, cheated, and took me for a fool. I can't believe you were that stupid. If I'm missing anything, then we can talk, otherwise, I have nothing to say. I'm the fool, not you. I don't know why I let it happen, you gave me everything I ever wanted, and I love you regardless of what you heard in those videos. You have to know I never meant to hurt you, and I never wanted you to find out, she said with tears rolling down her face. Exactly my problem Manny. You never wanted me to find out. You wanted to keep it a secret and continue to lie and duck your lover behind my back. That's the real issue here Annie. I can forgive infidelity, how we're all human and make mistakes. But this wasn't a mistake. You wanted this, and you wanted to keep it a secret and continue to lie, cheat, and conceal your relationship. I love you Annie, but as Tina Turner says, what's love got to do with it? My trust is gone, and I wonder if I really ever knew you. How many other men were there? How many times did you tuck your lover and bring yourself back to my bed full of his little swimmers? I'm so disgusted, I can barely speak. Sobbing now she realized what I was feeling and understood what she had done. She had no comeback or excuses, but admitted a wrongdoing. Okay, I'm guilty and I hate myself. There was never anyone else, and no matter what I say I know you won't be able to forgive me for what I did, but I don't want to get divorced. I'll do whatever you want to stay in this with you. I think I need counseling, and maybe we can go together to find out what's wrong with me. Please don't leave me. I was silent for a moment and said, Annie, you can go to counseling, figure out whatever you need, and I'll support you, but I can't live with a woman that can throw me away so carelessly. Your actions and the things you said told me your true feelings, and I don't see any way I can live with someone that feels that way about me. I know there are other women out there that would be more than happy to be with me. You had your chance, and you freely gave it away. Enjoy your week here with the girls, try to explain why you're leaving. I will not disparage you, but you need to tell them you're leaving and why. In the divorce agreement, I've given you full access to the girls, anytime you want, but they will live with me. If you continue to slot around and be a bad example for the girls, I will make your visitations much more difficult. Look, I'll treat you better than you deserve and help maintain your relationship with the girls, but I have two questions I would like answered. Listen to my questions and think about them before you answer. My first question is why? Why did you risk everything for this? My second question is, was it worth it? I called Jeremy the following Monday and told him to meet me for lunch on Wednesday. After convincing me how smart it would be to meet me, I explained to Jeremy how upset I was that he destroyed my marriage and how close he came to being taken out. I then explained how I had a better plan for him. During lunch, I explained how many people were hurt because he seduced a married woman. I explained how I expected him to make restitution. He was going to pay for Annie's rent and car payments for the next three years. I felt he should have some pain for his actions. I explained how it would work. I'll send you the payment information so you can set up the automatic payments. This is your punishment and trust me, you're getting off easy. Even though I'm done with my slut wife I still love her and want her taken care of. Since you're the one that caused this, you will follow my demands. This arrangement will help Annie get on her feet after I kick her out. I don't care how you do it, but if you don't follow through on this, I will make sure you lose your job and that Sarah finds out about your infidelity. As a side benefit, you get to remain alive. All of this is because you had to seduce a married woman. Ask holes like you need to understand that there are ramifications for your actions. Why not go after single girls instead of breaking up families? That was really a bullshit move Jeremy. Epilogue. I treated Annie well, allowed her to visit the children, and kept their relationship strong. We remained friendly, but she never gained back my respect or trust. Jeremy made those payments every month, with my threat hanging over his head. Annie was never able to explain or answer those questions to my satisfaction. She was clear that her cheating and lying were not worth it, and was sorry she did it, but she couldn't explain the why. She now lives alone, with no boyfriend, and without the love she once had. I could have destroyed her, but losing her family and my love was enough of a revenge. Even with her counseling, the answer to the why question still could not be explained. The best she could come up with so far was, I don't know why, it just happened. It had nothing to do with you or our marriage because I do love you and I was happy with our sex and our life together, but it was something new and exciting. I screwed up. I could not hold back, Annie if you were happy, why would you dress up and wear sexy clothing for him? 
Why would you dress like that and do things for him that you never did with me? Perhaps if you had made that effort with me, we wouldn't have been in this position. It just happened isn't really an answer. You did it over and over and you dressed to turn him on each time. But you tell me you love me. I hope someday you can tell me why. I think you owe all of us that much. For us husbands and boyfriends that have been cheated on, this seems to be the riddle that can't be solved. Thanks to these two cheating couples, I'm not sure I can ever trust or give myself fully to another woman again. Sad but true. Married partners should consider their actions and the consequences they inevitably bring. The path of destruction left behind is greater and longer lasting than the excitement of sexual gratification. Speak with your partner. Either share each other's needs or leave the relationship, but a betrayal is a painful act with long lasting effects. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a video.